Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video we are going to explore grain history. Geologists are extremely interested in knowing past conditions and depositional environments. So for example you have a sedimentary rock and you want to know what kind of environment this sedimentary rock was deposited or what kind of conditions it went through until it was deposited. Well we have different rules and different tools actually that can tell us past environments and depositional environments and all of them are based on the grain history we look at the grain and based on the grain that is in the sedimentary rock we can tell what kind of environment the rock was deposited so how can we know the history of a grain well we have different tools the first one is grain size sedimentary rocks consist of grains and the size of the grains is different between one rock or the other it's a law of nature or it's a law of physics that heavy things require more energy to transport so if we have a gravel and we see that the grain size are big for example in this picture we see this black grain has a very large size we know that the energy that transported this grain was also high so when we see a gravel clastic rock we immediately think of high energy because the grains that exist in gravel is large therefore they require higher energy to transport usually when we have an energy source for example like a spring the highest energy is near the source so the rocks that form near the source the first one is gravel then when the energy decreases smaller particles that do not require a lot of energy to transport get deposited therefore first we get gravel then we get sand eventually we get mud because mud has the smallest grain size and they don't need a lot of energy to be transported therefore with a very 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 small energy they can go very very far this is one way we can tell depositional environments based on the grain size another tool that we have that can tell us about depositional environments and grain history is sorting we have four kinds of sorting we have very poorly sorted poorly sorted, well sorted, and very well sorted. So what is sorting? Well, sorting is the degree of similarity between the grains. If you have a clastic rock and the degree of similarity between the grains is very, very low, we call it very poorly sorted, meaning you have big grains, medium grains, kind of large grains, small grains. This is poorly sorted clastic rock. So how can we use sorting to know grain history and therefore to know depositional environments and what kind of conditions the rock was deposited? Well, if you have very poorly sorted clastic rock, you know that you have big grains and small grains. If you have big grains, then you know it needed a lot of energy to be transported and you know big grains get deposited near the source therefore very poorly sorted rocks or clastic rocks have not been transported very far they get deposited near the source however very well sorted clastic rocks usually get deposited away from the source since the grains don't need a lot of energy and they can travel very far therefore they get deposited away from the source so as you can see here we have a very poorly sorted rock we immediately know that this poorly sorted rock was deposited near the source because we know it has big grains and big grains require a lot of energy. Um, but very well sorted clastic rocks indicate low energy environment, indicate environments that are away from the source. Therefore, we conclude that this clastic rock was deposited away from the energy source in a low energy environment so we have very poorly sorted poorly sorted well sorted and very well sorted clastic rocks another tool that we have that can tell us information about past environments and depositional environments is grain shapes grain shapes can decode the history of the stone and the energy that carried it because think about it if you have angular grain shapes that means this grain did not interact a lot with the environment or it did not hit a lot of other rocks simply therefore it did not break the angular edges but as the rock moves 
let's say through water or through wind, it hits other rocks and gradually starts to lose its angular sides. Therefore, angular grains suggest that particles have not been transported very far. So if you have a clastic rock and it has angular grains, that means it has not traveled very far. But if you have particles or grains that are extremely round, that means that the depositional environment is away from the source and the grains have traveled a lot of distance. Let me show you some live examples. We have this clastic rock. We see the grains have very sharp edges. They are angular. Therefore, we conclude that the energy or the depositional environment where this rock was deposited is closer to the energy source. So this rock is angular and it indicates that the rock was deposited near the source. We have subangular grains. These grains are kind of rounder than angular grains. This indicate that the rock was deposited further than angular rocks. Eventually we get rounded grains. Rounded grains means that the depositional environment where this rock was deposited was away from the source. So usually you can see that angular grains in a rock, in a clastic rock, are usually poorly sorted but rounded grains in a clastic rock are usually well sorted. So to recap, 